I'm gonna try to chug along in this video without getting too chalked up on my words. I am still sick. My throat is in extraordinary pain. My goodness, it's tough to even breathe. But, like Bell at the height of the Cold War, we've got a job to do. And that is exactly why we are making this video here. So, the Vancouver Canucks have lost Game 2 of their 2024 second round series against the Edmonton Oilers. It comes to us via a 4-3 overtime win at the hands of a goal scored by Ian Cole. And no, Ian Cole did not get the game winner for the Canucks. Everybody's gonna go and flock to the Ian Cole game winner at the end because, hey, spoiler alert, it's actually Evan Bouchard who scores the final goal for Edmonton to seal the deal in overtime, but the play at hand was a beautiful cross crease right to the back door. He's trying to find Zach Hyman, Bouchard is, but instead it's Ian Cole right at the mouth of the goal. And if you took away all the jerseys, you took away all the colors, if you had somebody who did not see any colors watching this game, they probably would have been like, oh wow, that was an amazing pass and an amazing goal because it kind of went off the mark perfectly. Ian Cole, put the puck in his own net. Such a sleeper agent play for the Edmonton Oilers, and not one that Arthur Seelovs could have had much chance with. To be honest, Seelovs played okay. I think two out of the four goals that he let in, you don't want to see those go in, but at the same time, I mean, he did make a few really nice stops and was clutch in the third period towards the end there to keep the game tied at the threes. Honestly, the way the Canucks played the last 30 minutes or so, I kind of feel like they deserve to lose, especially towards the end of the third. The Oilers were just going to work. The Canucks were getting cooked, and this is why Edmonton is seen as a Stanley Cup favorite in this series, getting themselves their very first win against the Canucks all season long. And to be honest, from the Canucks' perspective, I feel like they just kind of let this game get away from them, similar to the way they let Game 5 get away from them against the Nashville Predators. But at the same time, it's like, hey, you can say the Canucks didn't really play their best here, but they still got it to overtime, which is something that I think you can hang your hat on and say is a good thing at the very least. Because really, what this game boiled down to was a bunch of zone time for Edmonton, and a few mistakes that the Canucks made that the Oilers were able to fully capitalize on and get goals out of because of it. I mean, Ian Cole, of course, had the most egregious mistake putting the puck in his own net from Evan Bouchard, but even the goal before that, the Connor McDavid breakaway goal? Yeah, no. Connor McDavid only gets a breakaway because both Carson Soucy and Tyler Myers mess up their pinches trying to keep the puck in. And that's what ends up with the breakaway. Artur Silov's one-on-one -on -one versus McDavid. Okay, Look, I'm sorry, you can believe in Archer C. Loves as much as you want, but if any goalie in the world is going up against a Connor McDavid breakaway, yeah, no. There's no expectation to stop that. It would have been nice if he did, but it's not expected. Anyways, we did have ourselves a bunch of notes on the goals. Let's go out there and talk about him here. First goal of the game scored by Elias Pettersson. He finally gets on the board and breaks the goal-scoring slump. Petey, thank goodness he's finally back and he's finally gotten himself some offense. He played arguably his best game of the entire playoffs last time in Game 1, despite the fact that he didn't get any points there. But in this one, he finally gets himself a goal. Good to see that confidence back up. It's on a power play, too. Ryan Nugent Hopkins chopped down Nikita Zadorov. The Canucks got the power play. And this is where Hughes went over to Miller in the side. Cross crease. Easy goal for Petey. One-timer. He makes no mistake. Thank goodness he does not pass it this time. And he beats Stuart Skinner, who was committing too hard to the JT Miller lane in front. So it's 1-0 Vancouver, but then the Canucks get themselves their own penalty. It's Tyler Myers for hooking. He got a stick in on Hyman in front of the net on a rebound. Oilers on the power play, and this is where the tic-tac-toe play goes right through. Lots of saves by Seelovs, and the Canucks could not clear the zone for the life of them. Eventually, it's Drysaddle. He goes over to McDavid. Back to Drysaddle. The shot far side scores. 1-1 game at the 10-minute mark of the period. Then you have yourselves another power play. The Canucks get themselves Ryan Nugent Hopkins off for holding. The Canucks had a really good chance in this one. Elias Pettersson on another one-timer, but his stick broke, and the power play gets killed off effectively. In the second period, we have ourselves some 4-on-4 four four hockey, and immediately after, the Canucks score. 
It's Brock Besser right off to face off. JT Miller wins the draw. Nikita Zadorov over to Susie. Shot, and it's tipped down by Besser. Five hole. 2-1 Vancouver Canucks lead in this second period. But whilst the four on four continues, you have Matthias Ekholm responding right away. A slap shot bomb in the slot as Leon Drysaddle down low in the corner centers it. It goes off a of McDavid skate and Ekholm whacks at it and it goes in. So at this point, when it's 2-2, both teams have a power play goal each. Both teams have a 4-on-4 four -four goal each. It's been pretty equal, you could say, in terms of the scoring opportunities, but I would say that the Oilers had a bit more zone time and they looked a bit more dangerous sustainably throughout the game. Throughout the second period, though, you started to see more chances. There was a Sam Lafferty rebound on a Hughes shot that was stopped up by Skinner. Carson Soucy fanned on a shot at the point, and it resulted in a two-on-one with McDavid, but Soucy came back and swiped the puck away from McDavid when making the pass, so Soucy had himself a very up-and-down game, a la Ian Cole from Game 1, where there was a bunch of good moments, a bunch of bad moments, but Soucy stopping up the McDavid odd man rush pass was definitely a benefit. Then you have yourselves a bunch of penalty trouble with five to go in the second. Pia Suter put the puck into the stands and there was a lot of pushing and shoving. You had a bunch of guys going over to the box. Dry saddle went over for the scrum. Edmonton got a power play, but then it was quickly taken away as Zach Hyman went off for holding the stick. And during the four on four, you had Connor McDavid high sticking Quinn Hughes. Hughes was taken down and he was bleeding. Should have been a four minute power play, but no, this does not get called. The refs are not even able to review it for some reason. And the play just continues as normal. At this point, the fans are getting rowdy. Seelovs gets caught behind his net too with Tyler Myers. It was a really weird play where the Oilers had an opportunity of putting the puck in an open cage without Seelovs in the net. But just a minute after that, you had Nikita Zadorov coming in and doing the same goal that he had against the Nashville Predators, where he walks in down the left wing and just snipes it up high. From a tight angle, Zadorov makes it 3-2. That is his fourth goal of the playoffs. He is one of the top goal scorers on the Canucks in this postseason run. You could not have expected that when he was acquired by the team earlier on in the season from the Calgary Flames. But... With the end of the third period comes a bit more drama because he had Pia Suter knocking McDavid into the corner and it was an interference call, honestly a pretty weak call in my opinion, but it gets called nonetheless. In the third period, there's only one goal that's scored and you already know what it is. It's Connor McDavid on the breakaway. He gets by two very poorly pinched Susie and Myers Canucks defenders and they blow their coverage. McDavid comes right in. Forehand shot on Seelovs, 3-3. And for the rest of the game, pretty much, it was just Edmonton, Edmonton, Edmonton. All I have here written in my notes is Oilers chance after Oilers chance and Seelovs making some saves and the Canucks getting hemmed in their own zone. Vancouver's overall shots on goal in the third period, I mean, it was 15-2 in favor of Edmonton. And that was definitely not what the Canucks had in their plans for structure and tight team play because really I felt like the Canucks had a really difficult time at breaking the puck out of their own zone, causing a few lanes to be disrupted. They were kind of scrambly a little bit, just kept on giving it away at the line back to the Oilers guys and the Canucks ultimately paid for it in the third period with the extended zone time after the McDavid rush. In the overtime it's Connor McDavid, he comes right in Stops up, gives it over to Drysaddle, Drysaddle to Bouchard, and Bouchard in front for Ian Cole. That is exactly what we were talking about. Ian Cole, secret sleeper agent for the Edmonton Oilers. Had that bad game one that wasn't enough to get the Oilers on top, but then in game two, yeah, no, he scores the overtime winner. And Vancouver heads over to Alberta, tied 1-1 in that series. Now, at this point, you could ask, where do they go? Do they go Seelovs? Do they go to Smith? Honestly, I would be okay with the Smith in the next game considering the fact that DeSmith has played very well against Edmonton. If they wanted to roll with Seelovs one more time, I wouldn't necessarily disagree either. I mean, I could understand why if they thought that Seelovs was better than the 4-3 overtime loss would indicate on paper. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this tied series. Connor McDavid scored four points on the night. I mean, what else is there to say about that? I hope you enjoyed this. And... Bye.